the highest praise this evening of hallelujah. Hey, 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 hey. We give you the highest praise, Father. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. We're thankful, Father, for all those that have taken the time to join us on Facebook, and YouTube, and Instagram, and, and those that have made it out into the house of the Lord to be a, a part of this midweek service. We're so grateful. It's, it's time that we can study the Word, study the Bible. I encourage you out on Facebook. If you have questions about the, the, the service that's going on, ask those Hallelujah. questions. Utilize that platform to get your, your questions out, and you'll get responses back. Uh -huh. We want to be able to utilize the technology that God has provided us to get the Word that's outside right. of these four walls and bring it into your living room, into your vehicle. Wherever you are, you can be a part of of the service and get a part of the word. My scripture this evening comes from Psalms 27, uh, verses 1. We all are familiar with this scripture. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Father God, I thank you for your word and thank you for reminding me that that you are the light, Father, and if we're with you and, and in your hands, we ha should not fear anything, Father God. We should have confidence, even though we, we can be destroyed by the enemy at any moment, we should be confident in you, Father God. So I thank you for the word. I thank you for the bishop being able to make it here safe tonight. We thank you, Father, for what you're going to do. I pray that you use him and that it be less of him and more of you, Father. As we prepare to turn it over to the praise and worship department, Father, I thank you for this opportunity to be before your people. And I thank you for this ministry in the awesome and mighty name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Hey, hey, we bless your name, God. Here we are, oh God. Oh, come, let us All right. adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. In Come on, help us sing. Oh, come, let us adore him. Let us. Oh, come, let us. He's master. Adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. For he alone is worthy. For he alone is worthy. In Christ, our Lord, oh, we give him all the glory. Nobody gets the glory here. We give him 
God is worthy. Come on, say, are he? Oh, are he? He's a jealous God. Nobody ought to worship nobody else but him. Only he is worthy. Oh, he alone is worthy. Oh, he alone. He's a jealous God. Hey, hey. His wrath. Let me do it one more time. For he alone is worthy. Say, for he Oh, hey, how y'all both say to his word? For he alone is worthy. Oh, he alone. Hallelujah. that I could be here tonight. Yeah, I say that. I'm glad I'm saved that I could be here tonight. Because maybe church isn't a, isn't a popular thing anymore. Oh, Christ, Christ, the Lord. Yes, he is. Oh, Christ, Christ, he is my Lord. Yes, he is. 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 <laughs> yes, he is. Lord of Lords, King of Kings. That's what he is. <laughs> oh, glory. Woo, we worship him. Yay. I'm just glad I'm saved. Tell him. If I wasn't saved, I wouldn't be here tonight. The fact that I'm saved, I have a call of my life. So thankful, so thankful because, you know, could could be like Martin Luther King when he was, that last night he was ministering in Memphis. He didn't know it was his last night. I don't want it to be my last night, but good God Almighty, I'm glad I'm here. I said, I'm glad I'm here. Chris, I said, I'm glad I'm here. 
I said, I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad I'm here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, his presence is here. He's here. Worship you to worship the He's Jesus. here. He's here, Bishop. Hey! I thank you for his presence. Hey, Lord. feel his presence it's here in the room on a wednesday night high bible study he shows up yeah. all you gotta do is praise him open up your mouth and praise him wherever you are in your home praise him he cries he cries our lord he's alpha and omega worship him oh lord oh yeah 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 the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That's who he is. Lord, yeah. Oh, my, my, my. I don't, yeah. know why. I don't know why people don't seem to love him anymore like they used to. I know I still love him. Even with all my challenges, I still love him. Even with my problems, I still love him. Because he loved me with him. He loved me just the same. Amen. And you know, whenever you get a chance to really express love, I said really express love to someone who really deserves your affection, you ought to be willing to give it. And tonight, he deserves my affection. He deserves my attention. He deserves my, my worship. He deserves my my all in all and I'm grateful that he has me in this place tonight because I could be anywhere dead in my grave in jail in the hospital sick crazy on skid row under some bridge somewhere you don't know where night can catch you don't know how life can turn on a dime on some people I'm just grateful I'm in this space tonight just give me a few moments just, just to, be, to give God thanks. Woo. Somebody said, let us. I'm going to talk about this. Some things that let us, let us continue to do these things. There's some things that only let us can do. Somebody said, let us. Just like we did tonight, it was let us worship. It wasn't let Sherwood worship. It was let us worship. Let us bow down before him. Let us, let us come before the king, our maker. Let us give the Lord our just due. Amen. Because he deserves it. You can't do it by yourself. It's when we come together. Let us, let us all bless the Lord. The Bible says in Psalm 67, let, let the people praise thee, O Lord. Let all the people praise thee, O Lord. And when the people praise thee, the Bible said, then the blessing will come. And we really need a concerted effort. We don't just need people to be on station. We need their heart involved. It's your heart, not just your body, not just your skills, your gifts. It's your heart that God is after and certainly be needed tonight. Let's read the text this evening, Hebrews chapter 10. Thank you for rendering that wonderful selection tonight. Touch my heart. I sense God's presence in this place. Here, let's start reading the word. Hebrews 10, 22 to 25. Let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him for our guilty conscience have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean. Our bodies have been washed with pure water. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to act of love, to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, 
but encourage one another, especially now. Somebody say, especially now. Uh huh. Especially now that the day of, the, of his return is drawing near. Somebody said, no, it's not. Yes, it is. It's nearer today than it was yesterday. Each day that you live, each day that you wake up, that's a day closer that his return is. You better hear me. T t the Bible says nobody knows the day or the hour he's coming back. You could have all your wishes and all your dreams put on hold because he can come back tonight. Let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do. But let us encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Verse 26. Or verse 25. Did I say 25? Yeah, 25. Amen. So I want to talk about let us. I got, I got four let us that we have to do. Somebody said let us. Somebody said let us continue to do these four things. Let's pray. Father, have your way in this place. Make it plain. Make it simple. But when we leave tonight, we know what let us means. And we know what let us have to continue to do. We will do it with the help of the Holy Spirit because we can't do it by ourselves. Give us grace tonight to hear, to be shaped, changed by your word. We give you thanks in the wonderful, blessed name of the Savior, Jesus the Christ. Somebody say amen. Clap your hands if you love him. Amen. So the text really, really, really spells out if, you, if you're looking at it from its proper context. It really talks about a way to secure a new and living faith. But I want to suggest to you tonight that there's some things that God wants to make sure that to let us continue to do. Somebody said, let us. And the first thing that it tells us to do in verse number 22, it says, let us. Give it to me in the King James Version for a moment. It says, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled with an evil conscience in our bodies, washed with pure water. Go back to the NLT. So it's telling us, the first thing that, the first thing it's telling it led us to do is that we got to draw near to God. Somebody say, let us, let us all draw near. Come on. Let us all draw near to God. That's the first thing that the text is telling us all to do, that we all have to be in a mindset uh, that our heart is all beating with the same desire in concert, that we've come here all desiring to draw near to God. That's what the text says. It says, let us draw near. And, and how does it, how do you draw near to God? I'll tell you how. Your heart has to be sincere. See, we, when people come to church, we don't really know how sincere they are. Coming to church don't mean that your heart is fully convinced or you fully persuaded. You could be in here and have your mind out there. You know I'm telling the truth. You've been at work and your mind has been somewhere else. You've been at home and your mind has been somewhere else. So what we have to do to make this work, we have to let us, all of us, the drummer, the worship leader, the administrator, the usher, everybody in here has to be drawing closer to God. It has to be, someone said, it has to be a commitment. It, it, listen, I, I can't second guess you. I can't, I can't, be, I can't be, be concerned whether or not I'm drawing near to him and you're not. Why? Because it's not going to work if I'm drawing near to him and you're not. Remember, the eye can't take to the, to, the, to, the, to the body. I'm not part of the body. So if you are part of the body, the text is telling us that we need to draw near to God. All of us. So you got, listen, so when you come here, you have to have your mind already made up. You can't get here and be half here. You can't get here and still be, be all over the place. You've got to bring all your faculties into this one spot. And when, when, it, when, when, it, when it's 11 o'clock and it says it's time for worship, you got to be locked in. 
you, the usher, the, the drummer, the worship leader, everybody has to be locked in and everybody has to want to draw near to God with a pure heart. Somebody say with a pure heart. Look, look, at, look at Isaiah. And, and when do we want to draw? You want to draw near to God when he's near to you. Tonight we had worship. Guess what? We could feel him. Isaiah chapter 55. Look at verse 6 and 7. Whenever God, when you feel God's presence is close to you, you want to draw near to him. Seek the Lord while he may be what? Found. Call ye upon him while he's near. <clears throat> let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. So let us draw near to God. When we draw near because we hear him, we draw near to him. And, and watch this. We also draw near to him in the morning early. Got to have a, you have to have a mindset that you have to get up early in the morning, start drawing near to God. Somebody say early in the morning. L look at the, look at the psalmist in Psalm 63, verse 1 through 5. So not, watch this. Not only, not only we have to let us continue to draw near to God. We have to draw near to God when he's near to us. We got to draw near to God when he's, when he's close by. We got to draw near to God early in the morning. And the psalm of David regarding a time when David was in the wilderness of Judah. God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this part's weary land where there is no water. I've seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and your glory. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. I will praise you as long as I live, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. You satisfy me more than the richest feast. I will praise you with songs of joy. Give it to me in the King James Version for a moment. Oh God, thou art my God. See that word? Early will I seek thee. Let us draw near to God, but let us seek him early. Come on. See, one of, the, one, of the, one of the challenges with the saints and why we see such an a, a unevenness in our worship and our passion towards God is because sometimes you have some people join near to God early, and then some people only join near to God when they get in trouble. It, you, we, God doesn't mind that you draw near to him when you get in trouble, but it's, it's, it's wisdom to draw near to God all the time. The closer you are to him, the closer you feel his presence. So that the writer says, O oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power, thy glory, so I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. But thus I will bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied with marrow with, and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. So the first thing, somebody said, the first thing I have to do is draw near. We, either, we need to get a, a church that wants to draw near to God. Even in the children's department, we have to teach the children. The, 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 those, that are, those that are teaching the kids, they have to be in a position where they're drawing near to God because you can't, you can't lead people where you're not. And watch this. When you draw near to God, you got to draw near. Here, here's, here's the most important thing. It says you have to draw near with full assurance. If I'm drawing near to God, I'm drawing near because I'm, I'm believing that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask or think. Do I have anybody in here? I draw near to him because I know he's able to do what I can't do for myself. I draw near to him because God is, is holy. I draw near to him with full assurance because 
I trust him. My loyalty is not divided. See, when, 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 we, don't draw to, when, we, don't, when we don't draw near to him with full assurances because our loyalties are divided. Sometimes people come to church and their, their, their idea or their, their thought process is half-hearted. Maybe God will bless me. Maybe God will get me out of the trouble I'm in. Maybe God he cares about me. And then they go back and the trouble that they're in, they're still there. And so there's this, there's this sometimes confusion because of what they're in. Forget about how they got in there. The fact that they're there and they're asking God to bring them out. Listen, if I've gotten myself in something, that I know I got myself in that God didn't do. When I go to him, I'm going to him because I know he can get me out. So that's what the text says. Go, go back to verse 20, 20, uh, 23. 23 says, I'm sorry, 22. 22. It says, with full assurance. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm drawing near to him because I, I got enough faith to know that whatever's wrong, he can fix it. If I'm sick, he can heal me. If I'm broke, he can, he, can, he can fill my pockets with money. If I'm simple, he can make me wise. Whatever I need God to do, he can do it. And watch this. It says, when I do it, make sure that my heart is right. Make sure that my, that my mind and my conscience has been cleansed. Don't draw near to God and you still got messed up thoughts. Don't draw near to God and your heart still ain't right. A lot of times we draw near to him and we still got stuff in our hearts that is that still we are still harboring some some bitterness, some envy, some some kind of issue in our heart. You can't draw. See, listen, you going to mess everything up. I'm thinking you didn't got your heart right. And here I'm at, we're a group now. We're drawing near to God and you still holding on to something. That's the story that happened to the to the prophet Jonah. They was on a ship. All of a sudden, the ship began to have this violent storm, and, and they were wondering what was the problem because they figured that at the time that they were sailing, it should have been smooth sailing, but they knew that somebody might have caused this ruckus. And Jonah opened up his mouth. He said, hey, it's me. The reason why this ship is catching all the, the, the storms it's catching is because I'm on here. What, what happens is we don't tell people when we come to church that we haven't been drawing near to God. We just come to church. We show up, and we hope that the people that are next to us have spent the week drawing near to him. See, just a little while ago, we could, I could tell that the musicians and a few people here had drawn near to him. I came here with, this, with the, with the uh, message, let us. So I, I said, let us. Mm -hmm. Adore him. I put that in them. I started, I didn't tell him I wanted him to sing that song, but I started humming it. After I started humming it, they started, they caught it. They started playing it. Before I knew it, it hit them. The Holy Ghost hit them. And their hearts were right. All of our, because worship hit it. How, how, because listen, you can't worship like that if your heart is still dirty. If your mind is, 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 is messed up. That's why you see sometimes people, some people worshiping and some people reading their books, reading their phone and looking at stuff. They're all over the place. Why? Because while you're drawing near to God, they're not drawing near to God. While you have cleaned your mind of filth and dirt, they still got filth and dirt in their mind. I wish I had some witness in. And watch this. As a, as a body, when we draw near to God... Some of us are not drawing near to God with full assurance that he can fix what we're saying we need, it, need fix. So it's imperative. If we're living in a season now where people don't even think they got to go to church no more. I'm going to get there in a minute. So, so number one, let us draw near to God. Let all of us draw near to God with full assurance, with sincere hearts, with our hearts and minds cleansed and our body cleansed. Number two, let us hold fast. Look at verse 23. Let us hold fast. See, see, the problem now is, folk, it, it, they don't come to church because that, that means they let go. I, I can only imagine what the preceding generation before us, they started seeing some stuff we were doing, and they said, that ain't God. They saw makeup, they saw pants, they saw different things that we were doing. And some of it was all right, but some things that they saw coming in the church, they knew 
it might create a sense of looseness and not reverence. So each preceding generation seems to lose some reverence for things that are holy. This pandemic, I don't know if it was uh, designed specifically to weed out the pretenders. But the fact of the matter is that less people are physically coming to church now than there was before the pandemic. Come on, talk to me. Now, I understand that, I understand that, that, that they, they, they had a problem coming during the pandemic because there was a pandemic. But the text says, let us hold tightly. How are you going to stay out of the body and, 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 and you're holding, it says hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. Do I have a witness in this building? So listen, we have to hold fast. Somebody say hold fast. Let us hold fast. Let us continue to hold fast. See, when you make a profession of Christ, it's two things that happen. You're saying that he died for your sins. It's say, you're saying that he's Lord of the universe. You're saying that he is the great I am. And you know what that means? When a person professes Christ to be a savior, you have to hold fast to that profession without wavering. No matter what comes at you, no matter what attacks you, you've got to hold fast to what you have professed. I don't care if you get sick. I don't care if the devil tells you you're going to die. you got to hold fast. Somebody say hold fast. You're not to listen to any other voices. You're not to doubt Jesus because he died for you. Not to doubt the fact that he rose. He rose. There's one strong reason for holding fast. What is it? That God is faithful. Why do we hold fast? Because God is faithful. Somebody said God is faithful. He's faithful to keep his word. He is the one who's promised to let the sacrifice of Christ count as a sacrifice for our sins. That's why 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. We need people in the hour that we're living in. Let us hold fast. Let us hold fast. Don't, now is not the time to quit. Now is not the time to give up. Now is not the time to give in. Do I have an amen in here? The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 21, it says, prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Coming to church is good. Celebrating the Lord on Sunday and Wednesday, Bible study, and, and having women's fellowship and men's fellowship, it, it's good. It's always been good. It's not just good when you get in trouble. It's not just good when you need to get, you want to have a marriage or you want to have a christening of a baby. It's not just good when you feel like celebrating. It's good even when bad times hit. Let us hold fast to profession of our faith without wavering. Your money can't waver. You can't waver your attendance. When you start wavering, guess what? You're double-minded. The church can't stand when people are wavering. A house can't stand, a relationship can't stand when people are wavering. So we got to hold fast. Somebody say hold fast. That's our duty, to hold fast. Let us hold fast. The Bible tells in Romans that, that our hope won't make us ashamed. So what I'm hoping for, I'm not going to be made. Why? Because God can be trusted to the end, to the very end. You'd be surprised some of the stories. My brother was telling me uh, tonight, or earlier today, he, he's, he's been a cancer survivor for three years, pancreatic cancer. When he got it, it was at the third stage. He said he saw a doctor three years ago, and the doctor told him that he better get his affairs in order. He said it hurt him when he said that. He said he saw the doctor just the other day, and he said, you know, when you told me that, that really hurt me. He said, well, when I told you that, 
I told you because I thought things might go the other way. But I'm glad they didn't. See, see and, and the reason why they didn't, because he held on to something. He held on that, that this is not the way he's supposed to go. He said, God, you got to make a way for me. Huh? When they told us that, that we had to be out of that building on the, in, 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 when we were in Tampa, been always wanted to come out here. But I had to hold fast to the profession of my faith without what? Without wavering. Sometimes you don't know what I'm going through. But the, here's, the, here's what you need to know. I'm holding, holding on. Somebody said, hold on. Whatever you do, don't let go. Whatever you do, don't let go. So let us draw near to God. Amen. And when we draw near to him, we draw near to him with full assurance that whatever we're drawing near to him for, he can do it. He's able to do just what he says he can do. Number two, let us hold fast what we have professed, what we said we were going to do. Let us do it. Number three, the reason why we come to church is so that we can encourage each other. So let us keep stirring each other up in love. Look at verse 20, 24. Look what it says. Let us think of ways to motivate one another. Come on now. Call, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love. I got a text earlier about somebody's family member suffered an enormous hardship. And, and they said that they, they wanted to do a couple of things. And I said, I ain't got a problem with that. In fact, I'm all for that. Why? Because we are to encourage each other. Let us motivate each other to do good works. I can't do that if you don't come to church. If I don't see you and I don't, you don't call me and I don't call you, the only time I hear from you is you're in trouble. I'm always encouraging you. You never encourage me. It's not fair. We come here because we have like minds. We have like hearts. We come here because we're drawing near to God because we're, he, we're wanting God to perfect us. We're, we're coming here because we're a body. We are a unified body. And we're holding fast to what we believe in God to do for this body. And we're all drawing near. It ain't five of us drawing near and 25 not. If that's the case, we don't have a church. We have to motivate one another. Now, sometimes you might not be able to motivate her or you might not be able to motivate him. But there's somebody in here that has the skill set, has the love, the love language that has the ability to motivate you to good works. Nobody should be trying to motivate you to do bad works, gossip, argue, complain, murmur. Lie, cheat, fuss, fight, stay out of church. We're here to e elevate each other. We're not here to have cat fights. We're not here to fight each other. We're not here to argue. We're not here to compete. We're not here. This is not a contest of who's better. We're here to motivate each other. We're here to make each other feel better about, hey, man, how was your week? We're to give each other attention. Sometimes people don't have nobody in their life. Some women have been divorced. Some men have been divorced. They got nobody, nobody in their life. We have to fix our attention on one another, not, not the struggles. Don't look at my mess. Everybody got a little mess. We have to give continuous care to one another, and we have to watch out for one another. How different would the church be? How much stronger would we be in Christ and in life? If we heeded this one exhortation, and note, what is it that we are to give attention to? To make sure that we are stirred up to live for Jesus. Hey, brother, how you doing? You all right? Hey, sister, how you doing? 
You all right? You serving the Lord? Where you been? We're to stir each other up to good works, acts of generosity, acts of kindness, acts of love. Let us, let us, let us, all of us, let us consider it. Let's be considerate of one another. That we show concern, not just for the people that we like, but for everybody else. Don't, don't show it just for Sutton, but show it for Michelle. Don't just show it for Anna, but show it for Dana. See, that we strengthen each other's weaknesses. That we help one another through every trial and temptation. You know what that means? It means that we love each other, and it becomes an act of love, not just word. We got, see, the church has come to a place, I love you. You be blessed. The Lord has favored you. We talk a lot of good game, but we got no activity. There's got to be some action. Not, not all of us are like that. There's some that do a lot of talking. And you know, it's the 80-20 principle. 20% of the people are doing 80% of the work. Shouldn't be that way. When we, when we, when when we let us, it means we, we will have a concern together for the, for, for the poor. Let us, don't let me feed them. Let us feed the poor. Don't let just me visit the sick. Let us visit the sick. Don't let me just visit the shut in. Come on, let us visit the sick and shut in. Don't just let the, uh, the people that have a love for orphans go to the orphanage. Let us. Let us go into the broken homes, the single parent homes. Not just, not just the women that have single, women that have no husbands, but let us all go together. Let us become friends to those that are lonely. Let us give direction to the empty and to those that don't have any purpose. The exhortation again, give attention to one another. Why? To make sure none of us are lacking or slacking. Man, where you been, brother? Where you been, man? Where you been, sister? Ain't seen your name on the envelope, man. Ain't seen you. It ain't just about your giving. It's about you. You don't tell me, man, we, we need your money. No, we need you. But we know if you're not here, we know that your resources aren't. But it's not, the, it's not your resources that we're concerned about. We're concerned about you. Our job, our, our job is to make sure that each, we're not slacking. Pastor, come on, pick it up. Sister so-and-so, pick it up. Come on. You can do better than that. You're slacking. We have to stir each other up. Do I have an amen in here? Look at Matthew 5 and verse 16. It says it right there. Matthew 5 and 16. It says, watch this, in the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. In the King James Bible, it says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. John 13, 35 and 34, 34 and 35 says, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another. As I've loved you so that you love one another. By this all men know that you are my disciples if you have one love for another. Listen, you can't be in a church and then after church is over, uh, you, you guys are sitting talking and, and, and you say, well, we're going to go out to eat. And the group gets up and you leave two people over there and don't say anything to them. And you do it week after week after week after week after week and think that they don't feel like you don't want them around. And you're not doing it intentionally. But it happens. We have to be conscious of people's feelings. Not just conscious of our own feelings. We have to be conscious of each other's feelings. 
God has commanded that we encourage each other. Not tear each other down, but lift each other up. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 9, let our love be without dissimulation, without hypocrisy. Abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Let us stir one another up. Bless you, man. You look good. That suit look good on you. Man, you look nice today. Wow. Praise the Lord. Your hair. Wow, you look, you sung, you sung, boy, you, you had me on fire. You preached. Let us encourage each other. Number four. I and mean, this is where I really wanted to go because the ground that we they're standing on seems to be shifting. No one, nobody wants to come to church anymore. Wednesday night is just say, hey, I ain't going. I don't even get convicted. Won't even. We don't even get convicted about God. And I understand if you're working, if you're tired, because I've been tired myself. But guess what? I had to come out tonight because it's my job. It's my job. And when I get tired, remember I said when you got when you're working, you're tired. Guess what God will do? He'll stir you up. He'll stir you up. He'll get he'll he'll get in you and give you the the grace you need to do what you can't do on your own. Look at the text says, let us not neglect our meeting together. That's what it says. As some people already are doing. We see it already. Some people already, I ain't going to church. You know, you know they say if you, if you do something for 30 days, it can become a habit. My God. Pandemic came two years. People didn't go to church for months. Maybe they fell in love with something else. Because something got you out there. Something, something has drawn you. If on Sunday mornings you would be in church and now on Sundays something is pulling you somewhere else. It means you're not holding fast. Or your loyalty is, 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 is somewhere else. And then now we got to start wondering where you're at and calling. And, and it says clearly, let us not neglect our meeting together. And it's a warning. Somebody says a warning. Church attendance. That's the, four, that's the fourth duty. Let us not neglect worship together. We are never to forsake assembling. That's in the King James that said, not forsaking. I used to wonder what was, what was in my grandfather. He didn't had a fourth grade education. Worked, seemed like he worked. He couldn't work no more, but he was, he, he was driven on Sunday morning to go to church. Saturday night, you could see him getting his hair ready, getting his suit ready, shining his shoes. And on Sunday morning, he got, in the, he got his suit on and got the step because he didn't have a car. The church was about three, four miles away. We walked every Sunday to church. He was a driven man. I didn't even know he was an usher. I had no idea what he did. All I know was he was driven to get to church. He was not going to let my grandmother slow him down. Stop him from going. He had, I don't know what was going on, but he would get there before she would. Maybe because she had to take us. I don't know. I wasn't there when, uh, if, uh, if Summer wasn't in. We were only down there when we were out of school. So I don't know what they did when I wasn't there. All I know when I was there, he was first in church. He wasn't going to let anything stop him. Not even for a brief time. That's the meaning of the exhortation. Believers are to assemble together for worship, for prayer, for the study of God's words, and for the ministry of witnessing. Read the verse closely. It clearly seemed that the idea is often. We are to assemble together often and never forsake our coming together. Genuine believers need each other. Let me say that again. Genuine believers need each other. 
the presence, the fellowship, the strength, the encouragement, the care, the love that they give each other. Note, some had forsaken the church, even in the day of the early church. How like some in every generation. The need is just what this verse says. Let's exhort one another. And so much the more as you see what the day approaching. You don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. I'm telling you. Listen, there is a, I, we, we're not to try, try to scare anybody. There is a war in Europe going on right now. And there, there hasn't been a day since that war has gone on that one of the parties have said that they would introduce nuclear weapons into the theater. And here we are just sitting back like more interested in TV than fellowship. More interested in worldly things than, than godly things. The Lord's return is near. And if his return is not near, your death is. Did I say that? For some of us, we have lived longer than we have time left. Mm -hmm. William Barclay has an excellent application on the point that merits our attention. As we minister the verse to our people, he takes the three points from Moffat in the International Critical Commentary, and he said there are three reasons which keep a person from worshiping with other Christian believers. One, he may not go to church because of fear. He may be ashamed to show his loyalty by being seen going to church. He may live or work among people who laugh at those who go to church. He may have friends who have no use for the kind of thing. Or he may fear that their criticism and their contempt. Number two, he says he may, he may not go because of, of his dislike of common people. He may shrink from contact with people who are not like himself. There are churches even in this country which are as much clubs as there are churches. Number three, he said, the person may not go to church because they're conceited. Frankly, he may believe and state that he does not need the church. But everybody needs God. Amen? We all need him. I know I need him. That's why I'm here tonight. Came here tonight, and I came in my, my Sunday suit. I said, you know, even though it's Wednesday, I'm going to act like it's Sunday. Because I, I'm thankful that I'm in this house tonight. I could be in a whole bunch of other houses, a bar or a place to eat, but I'm in God's house. I didn't forsake assembling tonight. Let us draw near to God. In the morning, we have prayer at 5 o'clock. If you're not praying with us, I suggest you start trying to get up one day a week or sometime and start joy. And if you don't want to pray with us, it's okay. But get up and pray. But if you are part of a church, you ought to be praying with somebody. You ought to be drawing near to God. You ought to be running with people, hanging around with people that are drawing near to God. And you want to draw near to God with people that have a full assurance who have cleansed their hearts and their minds of corruption. You want to hold fast what you have professed. There was a, there was a time that we needed to hold fast now. People are saying all kinds of things. This is the hour that we need to stand firm. Hold the line. Because you don't know between sunrise and sunset, what could happen? Listen, the world that we're living in is unstable. I'm going to say it again. The Bible records in 2 Timothy chapter 3, in the last days, perilous times will come. They just had a series of tornadoes just come across the, uh, the uh, western part of the country, tore through Texas, tore up buildings, all kinds of things are happening in the world that we live in. In California, just the other day, somebody went and started shooting people. They're not just killing black people. This was, this was an Asian. He was shooting his own people. And it's happening every day, and it's getting worse. And you think that God is just sitting there not, not 
not saying, hey, he's getting tired of all this mess. And there are people that are saying, Lord, when, God? When are you going to stop this? When? There are people that are starving. There are some, fo there are some folk that have been, be have been mistreated all their lives, but they trust God to make a change. They're not like us. We're just upset that, you know, we made a bad decision. We married the wrong man to marry the wrong woman or we couldn't pay our loan or we lost a car, we lost something. Uh-uh. These people can't eat. They don't have any freedom. They don't have the, the amenities, the luxuries that we have in life. Let us. We always talk about this as a nation of it's a nation that loves God, but I don't see nobody drawing near to him. He says, you know what he says? He said, you draw near to me with your mouth, but your heart is back there somewhere. We don't see miracles because everybody in the church heart ain't drawing near to him. I want to see miracles, but I know I can't see them if I got people that are here. They half in, they half out. Miracles only happen when there's a full assurance and then with it, there's enough need in the house. God shows up when there's need. For without faith it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is God and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I came here tonight to seek the Lord, to impress upon you to let us new life let us draw near to God. Tomorrow morning, prayers at 6, let us draw near to God with full assurance. Let us hold fast to what we believe in. Let us stir one another up. Let us motivate each other to do better. Let our light shine. And let us, here's the warning. Here's the warning. Don't. Stop coming to church. You, need, you and I need church. God pays the bills every month just so we can have a place to worship. And you don't want to come? Father, we thank you tonight for your word. Have your way in our lives. Let us get on one accord in the name of Jesus. Father, our nation is divided. You said a divided house can't stand. Please, God, help us. Help us in this small space with these few souls in this building. Please let us all that are here draw near to you. Compel us. Provoke us. Impress upon us our need for unanimity that we all come near with full assurance. Let us hold fast with confidence because you can be trusted. Let us motivate each other to do better and let us not forsake assembling ourselves. Give us this grace this day to run this race. Forgive us for our trespasses. We ask that you forgive our members that have not come for whatever reason, God. Heal, deliver, and set them free. Break the strong man's back so that they can return back to your house and find mercy. We give you thanks. We give you praise, and we give you honor. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Come on and clap your hands if you love him. We're going to take up an offering. This is the time that you can give. I'm glad that even though some don't come out on Wednesday, they do. We do see your remarks. That those that can't get out, certainly some of our seniors, we're not asking you to come out. I'm not. I'm not asking Eloise and, the, the, you know, the, I know if they could, they would. We, we want to just stay home. Just, if you can, tune in. But now everybody can participate in giving. And giving is between you and God. 
He said, you purpose in your own heart what you should give. Information is on the board. Father, we ask that you bless the seed, the offering, the tithe that comes in tonight. I've already given mine. I pray that you give overflow to those that are there. Give seed back to the soil and bread to the eater. We give you thanks for what's coming into this building today. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Let's stand for the benediction. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in this hour. We bless your wonderful day. Let us, let us, oh God, draw near to you. Let us motivate one another. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith. Let us come to church like we did and even the more. Have thine own way. Help us, God, get through this. Now unto him who is able to keep each of us from falling, he alone has the power to present each of us faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, to him be majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remind you that these are indeed the last and evil days. If there was ever time to draw near to God, it is now. The doors of the church are wide open. They're open in every city, every state, every country. Find a church and get in there and let God work on you. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. We love you. Thank you for tuning in. Hit like and share. We hope to see you on Sunday morning. God bless you. May heaven continue to smile upon you. Amen.